Um, and it's there's one key thing that you pointed to when you were describing that, uh, Yaron. Self interest, right? Self interest, not living for others. I think when people hear that, they hear selfish, right? Like be selfish, push everybody else out of the way, act immorally, be Bernie Madoff, right? Type thing. Whereas my understanding is the more you act in your own self-interest and pursue your own goals diligently, the better you're going to be for everybody else around you. Does that make sense? Well, maybe not everybody else, right? I'm not, sure. not going to commit to that. But to the people that matter, sure. Um, so Ayn Rand redefines the term selfish, or she resurrects its original definition, which is really taking care of self. Taking care of self does not involve lying, cheating, stealing, and treating other people really, really badly. That always boomerangs back at you. It, it basically is, you know, a person who does that has no integrity, is, is, is dishonest, is not using his mind to pursue his own values. And, you know, is not going to be happy. Look at Bernie Madoff, landed up in jail, just died, age 82, miserable, has always been miserable, was actually more miserable when he was rich than he is in jail. Because when he was rich, he was lying to everybody. He had no friends. He couldn't look his family in the eye. Couldn't have any kind of relationships. So no, the idea of self-interest is the idea of how do you build the best life you can build for yourself? And that involves creating win. That involves, first of all, committing to living a good life for yourself. It means investing in it, thinking about it, devoting time to it. How many people sit down and say, how am I going to make my life the best it can be, right? I'm going to live like 80 years. I want them to be every moment. I want it to count for something. I want it to really, really mean something. And I want to have fun doing it. I want to enjoy it. I want to, I want to really be happy at the end of the day, right? How many people do that? Almost nobody does it. And in that sense, almost nobody is selfish. Almost nobody's taking care of themselves. And then with regard to other people, the way to think about that is you want to treat them with justice. People who are bad, you don't want to have anything to do with them. And sometimes you want to actually penalize them because they're bad people. You want to distance them from yourself. You don't want it to have the bad influence on you. People who are good, you want to bring closer to you. And you want to trade with people. You want to create these win-win relationships, as many win-win relationships as possible. Now, it's interesting because we're talking sports, right? And in sports, it's win-lose. But yeah. there's a sense in which, for example accepting the rules of the game, living up to the rules of the game, having integrity around the rules of the game is win-win, right? Even if you lose a game because you stuck to the rules, because you're, you're, you're sustaining a game that is important to your livelihood, is important to your happiness, is important to your values. So you don't cheat to win, even though winning is important, because more fundamental than that is your integrity, and more fundamental than that is the value the game provides your life. Right. So I, just as an example of that, I think, think of steroids in baseball, right? It was the big, you know, late 90s, mid 2000s. Oh, we're all watching baseball, McGuire, everything. And it seemed like it was great. And then all of a sudden we found out all these guys were doing it. And then the game, not that it ruined the game, but it kind of, it's never gotten back to where it was. Therefore, kind of like you're saying there, cheating the game did not do the game any good long term it, it did you know i think that's right and I mean, there's a whole discussion to be had about whether the game should exclude steroids or not mm -hmm. or what the rules should be once the rules are set cheating on those rules is a is undermining of the game itself and therefore undermining of your uh, these people care about the hall of fame they care about their, their place in history they care about records they care about being winners as individuals and it undermines it it put puts what they call an asterisk next to their name. And, and so was it worth it? For, for many of them, it wasn't. And for the game, it wasn't. So how do we define integrity? Or I guess how would Rand define integrity in that kind of context? Because you say, you know, good, bad. I mean, objectivism, good, bad, you know, it's not in here. It exists out there. How do we... No, no, objectivism is not in here, but it exists. Everything... Everything to be objective is, in a sense, an interaction between what's out there and your evaluation of it. Good and bad are human assignments, right? They don't exist out there mm. independent of human consciousness, right? 
good or bad for whom? In what context? When? Is, is killing somebody good or bad? Well, almost everybody would say bad. If it's in self-defense, oh, then it might be good, right? So it, the context matters. So it always matters in what context is a particular action happening. Integrity means sticking to your moral values, those moral values that are pro your life, right? So sticking to pro-life moral values, that's integrity. And to the extent that honesty is a crucial, I think, pro-life moral value, that lying undermines you, undermines your life, undermines your integrity, undermines your future. Um, lying is, 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 goes against integrity. It, it, it's, it, if you lie, you're undermining your own values, your own life. I mean, look at, uh, to bring it back to sports, look at uh, the cyclist. Remind me his name. Oh, uh, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. I mean, he lied, he lied, he lied, he lied, he lied. When he was caught finally, and you're always caught. On big lies, you're always caught. I mean, he's miserable now. He's lost everything. He, he, they've taken away all his Tour de France winnings. He's going to be viewed as a, as a bad guy in history, a bad guy in sports. He's a nobody. And, and, and he, from a self-esteem perspective, he's, he's, he's being crushed. Was it worth the lie? Of course not. Even though he got those highs. It's like taking drugs. I mean, you might get the high when you take the drug. Is it worth it? You know, almost never, right? right? It's always not worth it. Do you think that, and this is a, this is a, about as large a question as you could possibly ask about sports, but you know, from the, from a young age, when it, when a child first gets interested in sports, and let's say that they have, you know, just a great proclivity, they're, they've got their physical potential, et cetera. And, you know, maybe the parents recognize, okay, I think sports are, are for my son or my daughter. Do you think that the lessons that a kid is going to learn along the way teach that kid or our our kids integrity? Or do you think that it, do, it depends? Yeah. It, it really depends on the coaches. It depends mm -hmm. on the parents. I mean, so many parents uh, win at all costs, even at the cost of your own integrity. Don't think long term. It's just a matter of winning right now. They can learn a very wrong lesson. Same with coaches. There's some bad coaches out there who, who, who instill the wrong kind of values and the wrong kind of sense of integrity. I think sports, like any, anything that a child does that it devotes a huge amount of energy to, huge amount of focus to, and achieves real achievements in, you know, kids can learn a lot from that experience and can learn real values from it if it's coached in the right perspective. But it can also be, it can also teach them the, the wrong things if the coaches and the parents are, in a sense, bad people and, and are teaching bad things. I am to begin with, I wonder if I can ask you to capsulize, I know this is difficult, can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? What uh, is Randism? I, first of all, I do not call it Randism and I don't like that name. All I right. call it objectivism, All right. meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it. And that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right. All right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind 
that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness and that he must not force other people nor accept their right to force him that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest all right before we go on reminder please like the show we've got 163 live listeners right now uh, 30 likes that should be at least 100 i figure at least 100 of you actually like the show maybe there are like 60 of the matthews out there who hate it but but at least the people who are liking it you know i want to see i want to see a thumbs up there you go start liking it i want to see that go to 100 all it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing whether you're looking at this uh and and you know the likes matter it, it's not an issue of my ego it's an issue of the algorithm the more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like share subscribe support like share subscribe support there you go easy do one or all of those please